Hey guys, thanks for being on the show, Pastor Pat Rankin, oh, with my co-host and friend, boxing aficionado, Bible study. Uh, I was thinking about this. Have Bible will travels. Living legend Mike Wood Senior, how you doing? <laughs> Yeah, I'm doing great. I just would like to thank the Lord for all the great day this morning and all the great days the past 74 years plus. You know what? You just can't even imagine how many times I've been thankful for these days. Hey, Amen. Look you at look, all the people on. Holy moly. You better believe they're on. Let me see. Kelly Stanford saying hello to you. Mike Madelone saying hello to you. I got to see your mother-in-law, father-in-law uh, Saturday. They came out to Troy, yeah. which is awesome. Love them guys. Love you guys. I uh, hope all is well in your family, uh, Mike. Uh, Junior Evans is on the show. Donna Woods on the show. Dot Morris on the show. Sean Seen Swoboda's on the show. <laughs> Deanna Fletcher's on the show. Uh, Mandy Schulte's on the show. Gloria Lawrence is on the show. Um, <laughs> so I've been thinking a lot about a lot of you guys. Terry Burke's on the show, and I wanted to say hi to Sean Seen Swoboda because you guys, uh, before the show started, you were talking about bacon. Yeah, and uh, uh, Sean Seen and her husband have the, the greatest bacon. Yeah, it is amazing. And we had some for Christmas. And we wrapped it around them little sausages. Oh my goodness gracious! <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, so thank you, uh, Sean Seen. Happy birthday uh, to Sean Seen. Is it your birthday today? Heather Geising is on the show. Uh, all righty, man. It's uh, I titled this <clears throat> message going forward. You can do it. You can do it, huh? Yeah, New Year, New Year. You can do it. Hey, I, I seen what. you out there at the gym, getting all the stuff pumped up and cleaned up and ready to roll. Yeah, well, you know what? What That's a looking. great, what a great place. It's gonna run, man. It's gonna be good, 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 good. That's new. But Mikey's gym. Yes. It's new. Everything's new this year, guys. 2023. What are we on? About the 11th? It's not too late to start. It's not too late to get involved in The Biggest Loser. <clears throat> oh, it's down to one's birthday today. <laughs> oh, Happy man. birthday. Your 29th birthday. Mm -hmm. Donna, congratulations. Lori Ridley, I was thinking about you today and your family. How are you guys doing? All you guys. God's really put... Uh, all y'all in my heart. Mm -hmm. So, Mike, pray for him, and then we'll get going. We got our show is action-packed, is always in all things Bible and all things fun we know about, don't we? Yes, we do. And dear Heavenly Father, we just <coughs> like to thank you ever so much for everything you continue to do and show and how to walk and act and uh, keep us accountable. We can't do that enough, and we want to thank you for all the great answered prayers you've given us. And all the great love you've shown us and compassion and comfort and strength during our hard times. And we just ask that you continue to be in our life and that so we can share you with others in their life. In Jesus' precious name we pray, amen. Amen. We'll say hello to Pam Baumgartner. Wow. Good morning to you, ma'am. Um, <clears throat> so if you hear a little noise in the background or birds yeah. chirping or whatever, tell them we got the windows open here to have Bible. I know the girls are going to probably come in here shortly and shut them. Yeah. Though, aren't they? Fresh air. Fresh air. Wild Man Dave's on the show. He is. He ain't afraid of fresh air. No. He, that dude is a rock and roller. And uh, appreciate that, brother, man. He has got a lot of state to it this. Leanne Loudon. How are you doing, Leanne? And hopefully where, Leanne, you're at, it's nice and toasty. Toasty warm. Mm. Roxanne Galati, good morning to you. Uh, yeah. Daniel Coker, saying hello to you, brother. Nice to see you. I ain't seen you in a while. Stop yeah. by the boxing program so we can say hey to you. Let's He's awesome. Look, I love uh, that guy. Laurie Ridley's parents need prayer. Did you see that? Let's see. We will pray for everybody. We're getting there ready to crank it up. Thank you for your prayers going through some medical issues with my parents. Yes, we are. Let's do that. Uh, Slingshot Van Griff praying for them. Lord, we're just praying for right now for Lloyd Ridley's family, and they need prayer, and I know a lot of others do, and we're going to bring that back to you in a second, but just lift them up. Uh, Pastor Ferguson, his family, and, and uh Jesus' name, amen. Gary Harden's on the show this morning. 
Um, he told me he had a rock and roller last night right. at Bible study. I'm curious. Yes, uh, Donna, we have Joyce on her prayer list. We're getting ready to do that. Uh, she says, hi. No, it's 33. Miss you all. I don't know. I thought Leanne was in a warm state, but I <laughs> I should probably rethink that. 33, we're warmer than you, wherever you're at. Uh, Kate Dennis is on the show. Kate Dennis is probably fishing or riding the range somewhere in Montana. He, I bet he likes He's it. retired. He is. He don't have to do anything anymore. He looks like he's enjoying it. Too. I told him that. I said, man, you're, and I mean this, and I want to say good morning to my wonderful wife, Vicki Rankin. Um, I told Keith and Tracy that that is the best I've seen them guys look. They just look phenomenal. Like mm -hmm. when we was getting ready for the play, whenever they were coming in, they looked refreshed and, and super cool. Roxanne says, please pray for Danielle. We are headed to the hospital this a.m. Oh, my goodness. Let's do that, Lord. We just pray for Danielle and whatever's going on with her. And, uh, uh, Lord, just just be with her and be with Roxanne for wisdom in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Uh, so I guess, guys, send your prayer request up. I'll go to the prayer wall. We'll start looking at the prayer list that I have. Do this before, I'm trying to get as much information out as I can. I just got done praying for uh, a bunch of people that filled these out. And Terry Burek is, is a follow-up lady. Uh, she's got your phone numbers and your connections. You know, there's a lot of people that got saved oh, I this know. weekend. I think, if I didn't miscount, there was roughly around six people who got saved. Amazing. We'll follow Amazing. up with them. They'll do New Believers class. They'll learn a little bit more about Christ and what mm -hmm. God's called them to do. Then if they want to become members at our church, they can do that. Uh, I probably ought to have you start teaching the new members class with the deacons. You know uh, you are You are astute in all things teaching. You know what? I have a hard time... Uh... <laughs> Oh, well. Yeah. You know what? Uh, Vet O'Brien's on. <clears throat> She's on, and she loves to come to church and shout about Jesus. You know, that's great, isn't it? Yes. I see her in the second row with her friend Jim, and they just love church, and she's got her Bible open. It looks like she uses it, and that's awesome. Uh, so, anyways, let's get back to this. Get you, get you one of these next week. Fill it out. Um Put your maybe it's your family that needs prayer. You know, it's the Smith family or the Jones yeah. or whatever. Put it on there, or you want to get involved at one of the campuses. Check that yeah. off. Uh, you heard about us by driving by. I want membership. I want to get in Bible studies. There are more Bible studies. Ryan Peth is on the show. Good morning to you, uh, coming from Wentzville. Uh, drove through there yesterday morning. Uh, bah, 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 bah. And maybe you want to get your kids in the youth group or the youth program. The youth are doing something cool this weekend. Oh, I bet. And uh, with the Dennis's, you know it's going to be active. They got energy. They do. A lot of energy. Mark and Felicia are the Energizer Bunnies. Or you want to get in a small group. Uh, connection, you want to be part of the parking lot crew or the production. You know I'd have put you in on the production and start... Uh, right in place. Yeah, I'll tell you what, you'd have a play, I'll tell you. <laughs> Do you think you could <clears throat> master a play like Elizabeth did for I Christmas? I wouldn't even attempt that. Wasn't that the most wonderful thing in the whole yeah, world? It was a great play. Forever? Yes, it was. It was huge. Brad Cottrell, maybe you and Brad could put on a play. That would be good. You know, I think Pastor Pat could put on a one-man comedian night. How's that sound? Let's do that. Pastor Pat in a fun time. <laughs> in a fun time. <laughs> Have a fun at HBWT. Amen. They've been to that, huh? Uh, the girls are coming in to shut our windows. Okay. And, yeah, look at all them lights. All right. Let's go to the prayer wall. Um, <clears throat> so, if you haven't been on the prayer wall lately, I'm going to go there with you in real time. Prayer wall. Uh, okay, man, how easy is that? You guys stay with me here. We're getting ready to pull up the prayer wall. And there I am. So I did that all in real time. Let's go. Uh, we are praying for Danny. He has prayer requests for 
Uh, he's homeless. Praying for him. Praying for Justin. <clears throat> praying for his daughter. Uh, she had surgery, and she needs uh, prayer. Praying for my wife's prayer for my buddy Timmy Turner. So Timmy, if you're watching the show or one of the, I uh, want to say hello, hello to Felicia Forrest being on the show. Thank you, Donna Shadrasky's on the show. Uh, thank you for being on the show, Donna. Uh, so again, if you guys are part of the Turner family, we are praying for Timmy. And it was nice to see Brittany and Kim and uh, Sean Walsh up there. Love you guys. Thank you for uh, your prayer. David Carroll praying for uh, his, fr his friend or family member, James. Uh, praying for... Let's see, this somebody's struggling with cancer. I'm praying for healing in the name of Jesus. Robert Davis is praying for uh, a custody battle he's got going on. Becca Law is praying for um, herself. She needs some intervention with the Lord. Uh, Linda Carpenter needs prayer for healing. And she has some uh, health issues. Becky Briner. Needs prayer um, uh, for Pete and Lillian. Uh, Pete's praying for a job and a new career. We are praying for Joyce. We are praying for Hayes Wait. And let's go through here and see if they got anything else. Got Joyce. All right, Mike. Let's, uh, and we got Danielle. I uh, want to pray for my buddy Johnny Moore. Mm -hmm. uh, we're praying for Nicole Witter's dad. And, uh, man, that's everybody I can think of right now. And praying for Jimmy. Mm -hmm. Kelly said, let's pray for Jimmy today. Mike, you got anything else? Uh, I believe you. Oh, well, I continue to pray for Donna and her shoulder. Okay. And, uh, Wish you a happy birthday. All right. So lift all that up to prayer uh, to the Lord, and we will get rolling. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for allowing us to be here this morning. We want to come before you and ask for healing, ask for some mercy and grace and love and comfort for all those needing it, and, and continued blessing and healing as they go through whatever they're going through. Mm-hmm. We just want to thank you so much, and uh, you heard the prayer list, the prayer request, and we would <coughs> just like to add our military and our police and firemen to Lord. that and the EMTs, mm -hmm. and uh, everyone else, unspoken out there, and uh, we just ask you continue to uh, guide us and lead us, and thank you for our answered prayers, and as we close, thank you very much, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Um, guys, let me say this, because a lot of times um, when you're on the prayer wall, um, if somebody doesn't hit the prayer hands, that doesn't mean you haven't been prayed for. So I apologize, you know, on here. it's The prayer wall is a really, really good thing. Stay on it, and you, you can monitor it. So if your prayers have been answered or you want to keep it updated, please do that. That's That was the goal and is the goal of the prayer wall, is to keep everybody praying uh, and just kind of letting everybody know what goes on. I think it's, uh, I, I think it's a little more efficient than, than what we had at the email, the email system. The email was just, uh, it, it's a good system, but it's not as good as the prayer wall. So keep your prayers coming on the prayer wall. We're doing everything we can to keep everybody prayed up. Uh, the, hands down, the easiest way to stay in touch with anything is this. Amen. It is this yeah. is it. Turn it in. I need prayer or I want to be on the team or I want to serve or I want to know more information. All that. Fill this out. Um, and for some reason, if somebody didn't get a call back or something, call again. Uh, we, we have people ready to pray for you, help you, uh, or whatever. Uh, bug us till you get an answer is what I'm trying to say. Uh, Tim Staples says, good to see you. Got to see you. Donna Shadrowski says, love Mike Sr.'s jacket. Is there HBWT zipper jackets available for purchase? I would imagine there is. Um, you can call the office, 
five six seven six zero zero seven and I was actually going to wear my Have Bible Will Travel zip-up jacket. I yeah, love it. That, man, they're nice. I think I had it on last night or night before last. I, I wear it. Uh, I wear uh, those zip-up jackets. I love them. So your answer is I'm sure there is, Donna. Uh, and there may be even some in the office right now. Maybe somebody to pick up. But And there's a couple different ones. It's You know, I love my mm-hmm. church one, and then there's a Have Bible Will Travel one. I like the zip-up. Uh... I love the zip-ups. Love them sweatshirt we had that few years ago i mean that, mm-hmm. i finally wore mine out I, right she said i don't do hoodies okay uh brad Cottrell says good morning all right let's get on to the show what do we need to talk about mike biggest loser next monday okay be weight in, wise weight wise be uh be in there if you want to get healthy i think it's just a good excuse to challenge yourself against brothers and sisters Guess you're thinking about what you're doing that's for sure yeah I mean, maybe a little more conscious of it um so and get yourself healthy sp- spiritually by coming in uh working out one night what, mm-hmm. what is once a month or twice a month you yeah gotta... you have to be there once a month or i i don't know maybe it's i don't know, you have to look at the rules on there it's all on there but uh, uh it's, I mean, you know, we had a crowd there Monday like you wouldn't believe it. That was about the most people I've seen in there in a long time. I mean, literally. I'm going to guess it was 30 or 40 or something. Yeah, in and out. And then you're with the parents. and the, Yeah, parents are there. Oh, yeah, and then we had professionals in there getting ready for fights. Had some pros in there. That's yeah. good. And, uh, yeah, that was a great you Great know, time. God is just good, isn't he? He's been so good to us. I want to say hi to my buddy and your buddy, Bill Jeffries. Thank yeah. you, brother, and thank you for your service. As always, Felicia Force. she said she'd like to get one. Just call the office, 314-567-6007. Um, I'll put that number in there. Mike, can you talk a little bit about um, the boxing program just a little bit and, and as people get ready to do the, the Biggest Loser? Yeah, so over the last oh, 10, 12 years, whatever it's been, uh, the amount of people who's joined the church, who's uh, still here today, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, they're, uh, you looked around and uh, it's just amazing. I mean, you know, we got our boxes, we got, uh, and it's all started with a little bit of feeding with the prayer circle before uh, we start our workout each uh, day. Amen. But the uh, Lord continues to bless. I mean, uh, e- it is just, easily bless. I mean, easily bless. Yeah. Plus, with the boxing, we go to these things, and you know, people know that we're a Christian set up and uh, show respect. And I mean, you know, even when we was, was out at the casino, when would you ever heard somebody pray at a casino? <laughs> huh? They need prayer. That's all I can tell you. Yes. That's another story. But uh, I'm just thankful for the Lord and all he continues to do. He just seems to know when it's time for you to do something. You know, if you just let it, that's just like with Michael. Everything just, you know, was getting in a hurry to do this one, this and that. Mm-hmm. And once uh, the Lord blessed him, and uh, hey, it's been a, just nothing but grace and mercy. Thank you, Jesus. So there's, there's three things that you'll need to know to get closer to the Lord, and I've already talked about them. Prayer, reading your Bible, and going to church. Prayer, matter of fact, I had to type that up. Mike, if you'd write that down. Prayer, Family. Uh, read your Bible, and go to church. Uh-huh. And that will get you to uh, closer to the Lord. Now, two things you need to know to be healthy. Make sure you work out and make sure you read your Bible. Yeah. That's what I told my daughter before she went back to college. I said, if, listen to me, guys. And uh, actually, I had a guy ask me about that yesterday while we was riding. Oh, really? He said, what was it that you said and, you know, before the beginning of the year? I said, pray and work out. Now, I'm going to stay here for a minute, so get your, get your pen out. Pray and read your Bible. Now, I, or I'm sorry, <laughs> pray. <laughs> oh, Lord. Read your Bible and work out. I, I say these two things are something you need to do every do to to do every day to stay spiritual healthy and physically healthy. Mm-hmm. Read your Bible and work out. And what does that workout consist of? Maybe it consists of of weights. 
Maybe it consists of walking. Maybe it consists of whatever type of classes they got at these gyms now. Mm -hmm. It's good, and I'm going to tell you why. It's good for your mind, and it's good mm. for your body. It's yes, good yes. for your mind to be challenged with all the things that this country has been through. Yeah. The illness and the COVID and the, and the respiratory things and the, and the mental things and all that. The problem when the, the, the depression or mental anguish sets in is when you're isolated, you're sitting by yourself, and you're not challenging your mind or your body. Now, when you're reading your Bible, you're challenging yourself spiritually. Mm -hmm. But when you work out, you're challenging your mind and you're challenging your body. So those are the two things. These are the essentials that you have to do every day. You don't have to be a workout buff. Take your dog for a walk. And if it's too cold for you outside, walk around your living room. Take some different routes in your house and if you're watching tv on the commercials if they still they still have commercials on tv i guess they do yeah get up and walk and then you can sit back down dur during the show but i'm telling you if you will just do this you'll see a great yeah. difference in your life wow so remember that to read your bible and work out that's the exact advice i gave my daughter so i want to give it to you um, and, and I believe it'll change your life. Grab mm -hmm. your Bible, do some exercise, <clears throat> and when you get a day like today where it's 60 degrees, you know what I'm going to say? Get outside. Get outside. It's all I can tell you. Hey. It is a game changer. Don't make up any excuse why you can't get outside. 60 degrees is not too cold for anybody. Hey, in less than two months, we're going to be... Uh... The day's already longer. Yeah, but they're going to be uh, sun, uh, 7 o'clock. You know, won't that be nice? Sun go down at 7 instead of that. What'd you say, how many days did you say that? Oh, you told me last night. It was 39, about 35 days. 35 days. Mike said it's going to stay light till 7 o'clock. Yes! Yeah, we all Yes, yes, yes. Love being outside. Love it, love it, love it. <laughs> Read your Bible and get outside. Read your Bible and exercise. Amen? Amen to that. Now let's read some of our comments here today. All right, go. Gary Harden says, happy birthday, Linda and Donna. Caitlin Scrimmett is watching. I'll bet Caitlin gets outside. I think they got a dog or two, and they got some little ones. Dennis Schreiber said, good morning. Thank you, Lord, for closing doors and opening new ones. Wow. Didn't get the house on Robertsville, but we put in an offer on a new place. Uh, in cadet to, on two acres. Man, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Tim Staples says, and now eggs uh, are $4 crazy. Caitlin Scrimma said, good morning. Paul Pam Baumgartner says, my neurologist told me that exercise is the only thing that slows down the progression of Parkinson's disease. And you know, and, and you correct me on this, Mike, mm -hmm. they are finding out, correct me if I'm wrong, anybody out there, that boxing helps Parkinson's. Yeah, they got them. Uh, I'll set up the Parkinson's. Look at the studies. Now, when I talk about boxing, it doesn't mean you compete or you spar. That means that style of exercise, that cardio or that punching or that... Having that, to think. The the, having to action. think, a throw, your hands and stuff like that. I, I don't know that it's... It could, it could end up curing it. I don't know. I'm not a doctor. Yeah, yeah. But I've heard over and over again that... The remedy for Parkinson's, one of them, is not only activity, but boxing. Yeah, we had a uh, guy in there talking. Many about times I've yes. heard that. Many times. Uh, thank you, Pam, for bringing that up. Uh, Mandy Schulte said, the boxing exercise ministry definitely has changed my life. I joined The Biggest Loser last year after Jessica invited me, and I've built so many friendships with people who uh, I would have never connected. Okay. Uh, ba, 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 ba. we're getting a new order form. So that's one of the girls saying we're getting a new order form. Becca Law's on. Z's on. Yeah, Z was boxing thing. Monday. Yeah, to we fight. need to get him a fight. Yeah, I bet he could fight I if he, he gets uh, pumped up here in the next uh, no 10 thing. or 12 weeks. I know you'd hate to get punched by him, 
<laughs> He's a strong guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Vincent says good morning. Good morning to you, Vincent. Thank you for watching the show. Ah, ba 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 ba. Let's see. Pam Pam Baumgartner says yes. Rock steady boxing is popular for people with Parkinson's. There you go, man. Um, get involved in it, man. I, I I'm gonna tell you what, guys. You know me. I don't sign off on a whole bunch of stuff. I just don't because mm -hmm. I think most of the stuff out in the world these days is a bunch of dung, bunk. My dad called it bunk, I guess. Is that what he called? Yeah. Uh, but I, I'll tell you right now, you, you come to boxing, and you'll find out that you got some great friends. Mm -hmm. Working out is good for you. Uh, it's, it'll, it's a life changer, uh, and, it, and it gets your mind going. Well, and you, get, you know what? You get to bring joy to other people. I like the prayer request. You know how you, you notice the difference with a guy first starts or a girl? Oh, I'm okay. Or now, you know what? They really appreciate it. You getting a chance to drop that seed, get it planted, and get it going, huh? Mm -hmm. Amen. Prayer. Uh, oh, Tim said, "What time Monday?" At at boxing. I'll tell you what. I'm pretty dang savvy here. Man, I'm not that great at typing stuff in, am I? Tim Stable that. says, I can, yeah, be there at, uh, we open at 5, but we start praying at 5.30. Uh -huh. If I can be there, I have a prior commitment on Monday. Yeah, Mondays, uh, Vicky That's said right. 5.30. Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, guys. Lando's uh, watching. Oh, so nice see you, Rob. And we also want to lift up our, our buddy Mike Loughton. So hopefully, uh, I know my buddy BC went and seen him the other day. So keep uh, prayers going for him. Okay. So I don't know what else is on the, in the bulletin. I think we covered it, but there's there's always something cracking at Have Bible Will Travel. Let's get into the new year, new you, and, and say this with me. You can do it. Say that with you me. You can right? do it. You can do it. Follow the Lord. That's what it is. It. It's all about encouragement. I want you guys to keep saying that uh, every day till this weekend. You can do it. Yeah. And then when we get to service... You'll be ready for the message. Amen? Yes. Will you say that every day? Uh, you know what? You can do it? Uh, you know, I might not say it, but I sure think I'm not. <laughs> yep. <laughs> no. Oh, Tim wants to sign up for The Biggest Loser on Monday. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, what time we start? I guess 5.30, right? Yeah. Yeah, they can come in and have prayer. They'll sign yeah. it. Uh, so Tim says you can come even on sign, and we'll be there at five. Vicky might probably wear him in before five. A lot of people, if they want. Yeah. Okay, let's get going with it. It's time to go to Ephesians chapter four, right. and uh, let's just start at four one, Mike. I know you've already picked out a couple of nuggets out of there, but four one or four? You said four. Ephesians four. Start right. with verse one. All right, we got it. Right here. Oh, you're in. Mass. You're in Colossians. Oh, no wonder it seemed different. <laughs> I thought, whoa, well, what the heck am I reading? So turn in your Bible. Ephesians there, one, right? Ephesians four. Oh, you know what? I'm having a tough time. That's all right. All right, here we go. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beat you that you walk worthy of the vocation with. Wherewith you are called. Okay. All right. Sorry, I didn't mean to stop No, you. go ahead. You want to... So, guys, here's what it's about. This is just an encouragement chapter. Say it with me. Encouragement. 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 And Jan told me not to pound the table anymore. I wanted to oh, do that I right know. there. You, yeah, I see. She that. said it bounces the microphone. Yeah. So, I'm not going to do that. So, when you see me doing this, I actually would like to punch... <laughs> you that mad at the guy now? No, I'm excited. Don't punch it on me. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Um, I'm encouraging you. You can do it. So here it is. Man, that messed me up when I couldn't slam my fist on the table. <laughs> he says, I beg you to walk in the worthy of the of the vocation I bet you, uh, where you were called. I bet your mama got after you when you hit the table when you wanted more food. You ever see them little kids hit yeah, the table? I'm tell you what, you hit the table at my house, you'd hit the floor. I promise you that. Paul Hall said, you can start weighing in, I think, Paul, at 530. Go ahead, Mike. Sorry about that. Chapter 2. 
Verse 2. Verse 2, rather. With all the lawlessness and murkness, long-suffering, forbearing of one another's love. Once again, all these things are words of the Spirit, which meant they cannot be done with our own ability. The help of the Spirit comes to us to our faith being constant in the cross. Verse 3. And, you know, endeavoring. Uh, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit and bond of peace. There is one body, one spirit, even as you call in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, and one baptism, one God and Father of all, is above all and through all and is in you all. All right, so baptized into, into Christ, when you become born again, you are baptized or fully involved into Christ. And it doesn't necessarily mean water baptism. And 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 I I don't know that it would exclude it either. I mean, uh, that's part of being involved in Christ is 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 also a physical baptism. Yeah. But he said here he's saying when you became a believer, you were baptized into yeah. Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. Obviously, mm -hmm. anything you would like to add to the, to that about you can do it and encourage people with that and and what that means. Well, you know what we all look for Christ for our. Uh, answers and when we do that through the holy spirit i believe you know and i think with the i think that's where i'm at okay um so today you can do it set some non-negotiables i will get up i will read my bible and i will work out that's something we need to do every day i don't care how late it is Justine Gincola, how are you doing today? Nice to see you on the show. God bless you. Thank you for watching the show. Yeah, well, yeah. Love, love Justine. I've known her a long time. She's okay, great. so uh, one God and Father, we're all. Let's, let's see what this says here. It says, speaks of the redeemed only. God is not the father of the unsaved, as Jesus plainly said. Their father is actually... Uh, is it John eight forty four? Who is above all? You know, where we got going? What's next? I... One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in all. Verse seven. But unto every one of us who is given grace according to the measure of the gift of God. Now, guys, stay there on Ephesians four seven. Listen to this. Each person has been given a measure of grace or a measure of faith. Mm -hmm. Now, you go, hey, I'd like to have more grace in my life. Or I'd like to have more favor, how, whatever you call it. The only way that grows is for your faith to grow. The only way to please God is through faith. So you need to ask the Lord to continue to fill you with his grace, fill you with faith, and the way you activate that is by using what he's already given you. So if you've had the assignment, mm -hmm. get up, read your Bible, go work out. After you do that for a while, he'll give you the next thing to do. Go walk at the park. When this person comes up to you, I want you to talk to him or whatever it is. And you need to know that you can do it. I want to encourage you. This is the new, new year, new you. I'm not going to be shy. I'm going to be bold in Christ. I'm not going to be timid i'm gonna no. tell people about jesus i'm not gonna be withdrawn i'm i'm gonna be spirit filled i'm gonna be excited i'm not gonna suffer from anxiety or depression anymore because the spirit of god lives with inside of me he creates joy he, he builds my faith he bestows more favor on me and then i have all kinds of it to share with everybody by being saved and him living within, yes, you're gonna have yourself a yes. of a party, aren't you? Yes, you got yes, it. You yes, got it all coming. Yes, tell somebody about Jesus what? over and over and over and over. Encourage them. Let them know it's a new year, new you. Reading my Bible, working out. Doesn't matter how long the workout is or where I do it. It just means I'm doing it. Yes, just do it and and. And everybody has a different one. You know, sometimes they can't get up or get out of a chair or something. 
I tell people lift soup cans, you know, do some exercise, doing commercials. Set your soup cans down. During commercials, lift your soup cans. Good work. Uh-huh. And, and, and read your Bible. And then, you know, I, I told you about the three things you need to continue to grow in Christ by praying, reading your Bible, and coming to church. Have to come to church. Have to come to church. Make it an effort. There's and bring plenty, your family. And bring your family. There's plenty of places to go. You can go to Troy, you can go here, or you can go to North County. Yes. These are non-negotiables. This is something I'm going to do. I'm going to pray. I'm going to read my Bible. I'm going to work out every day. And then I'm going to be at church on the weekend. That's what Rob's Amen. comment there. Yeah. Everyone has a gift from God to strengthen the whole body. Don uh, Burkowski says... Good morning, Roxanne. Uh, okay, Mike, verse number 8, 4, 8 in Ephesians. Okay, wherefore, he said, when he ascends up on the high, he led the captivity captive, and the gave Stop. gifts unto men. Okay, yeah. Stop. Yeah. Stop. Here. Stop. Yeah. Until Jesus came, there was no way to get into heaven. Psalm 68, 18. Until Jesus came, there was no way to get into heaven. Until Jesus came, there was no way to get to heaven. I just took my staff on this little journey. I started in Genesis. I went to the flood. I went to Malachi. I went to the Gospels. And then uh, I went in and told them that the, the book of Acts was how we're supposed to live in the church age. <clears throat> um why did I do that? Because God never changes. Human nature never changes. In the beginning, you know, you had Adam and Eve. They sinned. They got kicked out of the garden. Uh, sin went rapid. They had kids. It got so bad that God had to flood the earth. And after the earth was flooded, Noah and his family came off the ark, Mike. They set up an altar. They got back in communion with God. And by the time... You ended up the last Old Testament prophet before you go into the New Testament, Malachi. You find out they're still not sacrificing anything to the Lord. They're, they're not being truthful with God. They're not sacrificing anything with God. They're given lame animals, blind animals. They're given uh, what they had left and not what is right. Yes. Uh, and if you do that, God's not impressed. Then you get in uh, and he says, hey, there's going to be a messenger that's going to come. You find out it's John the Baptist. He sets the way uh, for Jesus Christ. Jesus came, born. We just got through this. Born a mm -hmm. baby. Lived totally, fully God, fully man for 33 years. Died on the cross. Rose again. Um, now he's seated at the right hand of the Father. And then he left the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. How's that for... And then if you want to know what happens to believers uh, in the end times and non-believers, then you can read the book of Revelation. So there's... Pastor Pat's full Bible dissertation in two minutes. Would you like to take my class again? <laughs> so I thought it was kind of cool. Yeah. So uh, Ben O'Brien says, I'm not a born-again Christian. I'm first born-again Christian. Amen. So everybody's got a gift. Care Glass says, God bless you all. Mike, share with us what it is you have on your heart that you was reading. Well, what I was reading there is what uh, where he said when he ascended up high, he led the captive captivity. Well, you know what? That's also in uh, Psalm. Psalm sixty-eight, eighteen. You want to read please, that? Please, please read. Yeah, you read that. Okay. Yeah, All right. Psalm sixty-eight. What is it? Sixty-eight, eighteen. I don't know. It says, "You have ascended on high, and you led, you have led captivity captive. You have received gifts for men, yes, for the rebellious also." that the Lord God might dwell among them. So, <clears throat> if you were a little rebellious, yeah. like me and Mike Sr., that's why Jesus came. But yeah. you still have to accept the free gift of salvation that only he can give. Amen to that. And remember, uh, not only that you can do it, but remember that God has something extra special for you in the year 2023. So, let me keep reading a few things here. Okay. Go, back, go back to Ephesians 4.9. I got you right here. It says, now that he ascended, what does it mean that he also descended? First into the lowly parts of the earth. Now, I don't 
and, and me and you've been through this yeah. before. Some people say, "Well, he went to hell to get to yeah, that wasn't and, hell. and all that," and and that's that's not it. And and do we want to get into big no. theological debate right now? Probably not. No, we need to get this. Uh... Okay, so what he did is he freed the people in in paradise. Yes, paradise was next to hell, and what it did is it held the people who were put faith in God, mm -hmm. faith in this coming Messiah, mm -hmm. and then Jesus came and he set them free. Amen. Exactly. And it has nothing to do with purgatory. It has nothing to do with, with yeah. any some, some bad theology. Now, paradise right. is in heaven. Yes, it is. That's where we want to go. So there's, no, there's one way of getting there. Yeah, one way of getting there. So please don't be confused. When you die, your soul goes to heaven, and then after... Uh, the rapture, your body will be caught up with your soul, and it'll be a glorified body, uh, and you'll live forever and ever. So that's another short Yeah, it says here, before the cross, it, it, he is now instantly taken to heaven since Jesus died on the cross. Yeah. Okay? And that's all through the Bible. But anyway, we, we, let's... Verse 10. 10. He who descended is the same who also ascended. Up far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. He gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all become unity of the faith mm -hmm. and a knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, uh, unto the measure of the stature of fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about. So listen to this. So this is all hot. Here you go. Listen to this. I, I knew this was going to kick this up. All right. So we're going to go here then. Okay. We're going to go here. Uh, Vicky says, don't be confused. Paul also says, how do I explain to my Catholic family there's no purgatory? Well, the first way you explain it to your Catholic friends uh, is it doesn't speak of purgatory in the Bible. The only place it speaks of is heaven or hell. Now, when you talk about this place, paradise, this place of paradise was a place where the believers went before Jesus Christ was there. Everyone needs to know that there was no way of getting into heaven until Jesus came. So all those who put their faith in Jesus Christ uh, to come, this Messiah, was in this place called paradise. And then God moved paradise after uh, Jesus died, paradise and all its people into heaven. Now heaven is this paradise uh, that the Bible speaks of. So you tell your Catholic friends, like I would tell any friends, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Mm -hmm. No one comes to the Father except through me. Exactly. So you have to go through Jesus Christ. Regardless of what your theology is, you know, whether you... Well, Whatever it is, you have to go. Everyone needs to know. I actually heard John MacArthur's explaining the difference in, in faith, whether it's Catholicism or Muslims or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they, he, they, this guy stood up and asked John MacArthur if, um, if that the Jesus they pray to is the same Jesus right. that we pray to, and he said no. And what he was saying is, is the Jesus that we believe as Christians. Mm -hmm. Is, is the Jesus who came, he died, he was resurrected, seated at the right hand of the Father, uh, he set up his church and left his Holy Spirit here. Yes, um, that dwells with us. That dwells with us. And, and the way you can get to heaven is through faith in Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and not through works. So whether they're Catholic or whether whatever, your faith in Christ is the only thing that can get you saved. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you can read that in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Uh, yeah, Donna says it right. Paradise and purgatory are not the same. No, 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 no. I, I, I've never even seen purgatory in the Bible. Uh, yeah. uh, I think I've studied the Bible a little bit here and there. I've never seen it, so if anybody can find purgatory, let me know where it is. Yeah. Have you found it? Yeah, I don't look for it because I don't need it. I've never seen it. I have, I've never had anybody point. Here's what I am. I'm just, I'm so simple and so, um, just, I'm a simple man. I, if somebody could take me to it, 
and you've enlightened me through the years on Bible studies, Mike, on, on different things. Uh, and Mike's done a good job of that through the Holy Spirit. He's challenged my, uh, my theology on some things. And uh, if somebody can take me to the Bible, man, I'm, I'm ready to learn. I definitely don't know everything. Oh, my wife would tell you I know almost everything, but there's some things I still don't know. You know what she'd tell you? I what you she... don't know, you don't need to know. <laughs> yeah, so here's, here's something. Here, whether it's tradition or religion, there's nothing wrong with tradition. There's nothing long, r- wrong with religion. Just as long as tradition's not your God or religion's not your God. Nothing can be bef- nothing can be before the Lord. You can't get a second chance after you die unless you. Hey, that's it. That's what he says there. I've tried telling that. Well, you know what? Why would you get? You, he tells right off. There's no way but be- but through me. But me. How simple is that? My wife says I know almost everything. So I'm, I'm only, only if I could learn like two more things, I would have everything pretty much. Locked in. Well, I'll tell you, you believe what, that? I only need to you know, know about two million more things. Yeah. <laughs> as long as you know Jesus, you're. That's it. You're know Jesus, company. and you know what the rest doesn't matter. So you encourage, encourage one another. Let them know they they can do it, and make sure you recite that you can do it. <coughs> and we only got ten minutes, so I'm going to keep reading. If you don't yeah. mind. Yeah. Did I answer all questions? Uh, I guess I can't I'll answer all, but. All right, so he gave gifts. That was uh, 411. 412, for perfecting of the saints. So he gave us an edifying the church is what he said, and I paraphrased 12. So the reason he gave pastors, the reason he gave uh, apostles and prophets and evangelists and teachers Mm. is to pump up the church, to perfect the saints. Yes. So perfecting the saints is something that the Holy Spirit does. It ain't anything you do. The only way you can become perfect or more like Christ is through the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit. And you and I won't be fully known until we're fully in front of God. Right. Apostle Paul says that too. I love reading the Bible. No, it's and nice. I love studying it. I should probably do it more. You know what? As we sit here this morning looking at this, you often you often wonder why don't I do it more? Do because you? you're a human being. You know you enjoy it. I it, I love it. I love reading the Bible. You like, yeah, exactly, and it makes you feel better. And then you get smarter. Oh yeah. Uh, Marcy Topas is on. All right, let's keep going. I got to get up to twenty something. Wow. I got I got to really cruise. Here we go. Till we all come to the unity of faith. I'm in verse 13, 413 in Ephesians. And of knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, measure of stature, fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children that are tossed to and fro, carried about every wind and sound do- uh, end of doctrine by the, slight of the, by the slight of men and the cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in him in all things, which is the head of Christ, from whom the whole body fitly together, watch this, Mike, and compacted by uh, every joint supplies, according to the effectual working and the measure, measure of every part, making increase of body unto edifying itself in love. This I say, therefore, and testify to the Lord, that henceforth walk not as Gentiles walk in the vanity of their minds. And you could read that if you were reading any of Solomon's mm-hmm. writings. Having the understand darkness darkened and alienated from a life of God through ignorance that is in them. Uh, because of blindness of their heart, who being past feeling, have given them over to lavishness, to work all unclean greediness. Mm. But you have not learned Christ. If so, you have heard him and have been taught by him as truth in Jesus that you Mm. put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to deceitful lust, 
and being renewed, watch this, Mike, yeah. in the spirit of your mind. And that the new man, which after God is created in righteousness, true, and holiness. Stop. That's where we end the show. Okay. New I'm man. Saying. New year. New you. New mindset. New habits. New convictions. New people, new language, wow. new everything. Stop with the old people, the old ways, the old behavior, the old language, the old mm. methods, the old I've tried, I'm trying, the new, all this stuff. Oh, it's over. Tell your friends, your family, my old life is over. The old man is gone. Yeah, Say yeah. that with me. The old man is gone. And the new has come. I'm walking in the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm walking in the power of God Almighty. I've been saved by the blood of the Lamb. I love serving Jesus. I love Amen. reading my Bible. I love being happy. I love being healthy. I love being joy-filled. I love smiling. I love being outside. I love exercising. Love I, love, I love being kind. I love being at a church. I love being around positive people. Away with the old life and the old way of thinking. I'm a new man. Amen. Praise God and thank you, Lord. Oh, what a day, huh, Pastor Pat? Well, I'm not going I'm not doing it. My I told my wife this morning. Uh, I don't know, he's talking about something. I can't remember what it was. I was getting ready to walk out the door and I just got done praying. I was getting ready to pray with her and she asked me about such and such and such and such. And uh I can't remember what it was about, but I just told her I said that, that dog don't hunt here anymore. Yeah. What do you think about the old stale ways? You know what? It, that dog don't hunt. You yeah. want to stay away from the old ways, I'll tell you that. I mean, And the old mindset. And the old negative thinking. And the old negative health. The old negative ways. Man, here, look at me for a second, people. I'm going to get me some. I'm going, I am bent on getting me a little. Watch this. Favor, come my way. Blessings come my way. Good living come my way. Amen. Good people come my way. Joy come my way. You, know, you go, well, Pastor Pell, what do you do with all the negativity and all the bad people? They don't have room. Bye, bye bye. Watch this. Bye bye. I wish somebody would shout a little bit on the show. Bye bye. Don't you worry about everybody and everything? Don't you chase people around? Yeah. Nope. Don't you get depressed and, and sad? Nope. Not no more. You got Jesus. You got it all. Don't you? Why would you be sad when I know I'm going to heaven? Anything I get from here is a blessing. Amen. What are you sad about? Yeah. You're sad because you ain't around the right people. Get in church. Pray. Read your Bible. Go to church. Pray. Read your Bible. Go to church. Pray. Read your Bible. Go to church. And pray for them family members that need saved. Yeah. I wish somebody. I wish somebody gets saved today. Oh, I tell you what. There's somebody getting saved today. Can you believe all the people get saved last weekend? You know, it's, you it's, got to get in church. Well, that's what what it's about. If you don't get that part, you know what. You're wasting your time. I think you are. I'm just going to be told. I mean, you you know, you'll be a better person, but if you by coming to church and fellowship and with Christians. But in order to get to heaven, there's one way, and that's only through Jesus Christ. Here's all I can tell anybody: one thing. If there's only one thing, one thing in the whole wide world, you do go to church. <laughs> forget everything else. Forget about your race. Forget about working overtime. Forget about double time. Forget about triple time on church. Forget about, I'm going to work a little overtime. We're going to have a little more money. You ever done that before? If I just lay one more piece of time, we're going to have all the money we need. and All our problems will go away. No, it won't. Just be at church in 2023. <laughs> just put it on your calendar. I don't need to go boating. I don't need to go hunting. I don't need to go 
uh, kids' soccer game on Sunday morning, I need to go to church. Amen. Then after you go to church, you can go to the soccer game. You can go hunting. You can go fishing. You go whatever it is you do. Put God first. Amen. Praise God. If you can't go on Sunday, go on Saturday. Yeah. Absolutely. Pray for him, Mike. That's it. Dear God, just thank you for oh, all Lord the things. Jesus. This has been such a joy to be able here to spread your word and gospel this morning. As we come before you, we want to praise you and give you all the thank glory. You, Lord Jesus. All the love we have in us. And try to keep us to be a better Christian or better. a better person by being kind to others. And we ask you to continue to guide us and lead us and correct us and uh, keep us accountable. Yeah. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Yeah, Vicky and Donna both said, "Put God first and put Jesus in your life." Lord, we hope you, we hope everybody does that today, and they get saved. Keep Jesus first. My name's Pastor Pat with my co-host and friend, the living legend Mike Wood Sr. I want to tell you what? Remember two things: Jesus loves you, and I love you. Have a great day in the Lord. Have a great day in the Lord. See you this weekend.